Today, we're talking about the Kinvara 11 after 100 miles. Twelve point seven seven miles for my two runs today. Run commuting to and from work. About nine minutes twenty nine seconds per mile between the two runs, and about one hundred and thirty four beats per minute, keeping things nice and easy. Uh, I've been at the point in my training, getting ready for the Boston Marathon, where I've been putting in a little bit of some harder workouts. And today's miles were some very sweet, sweet recovery miles that I definitely needed and definitely enjoyed in the Kinvara 11. Before I go into my deeper thoughts into the Kinvara 11 after 100 miles, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Roadrunner Sports for the purpose of review, so I didn't have to pay for them myself. However, no one's paying me to make this video or to wear the shoe, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my thoughts before you get a get before you guys get a chance to see this footage on YouTube. Now with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Kinvara 11 after 100 miles. Now this is a four millimeter heel drop shoe coming in at a claimed 7.8 ounces, so a relatively light shoe, and it definitely feels light in hand. And a lot of that has to do with the new foam that they're using this year, which is the Power Run and the Power Run Plus. Now on the back of the shoe, it says that it's a Power Run shoe. I think that's for the most part what's going on in here. Uh, but then there is, I believe, a top layer of Power Run Plus, something that we've seen in the Triumph 17, uh, which is that material that looks like Boost and kind of feels like Boost, but is supposed to be lighter than Boost. And in the combination of these two, you get a little bit of a firmer material on the bottom for responsiveness and a softer material up top so that it feels a little bit nicer on your feet as you're running and the material the power run plus i don't see anything that looks like boost in here but i definitely have some feelings that it's like boost when i run into the shoe and that for the most part that's been a pretty good thing it's not like running in an ultra boost by any means and it's not like running in the triumph 17 by any means either it's like a thinner trimmer slimmer quicker version of that and it's all working out pretty good. I will say though that it doesn't feel like a Kinvara to me though given those changes. The Kinvara to me was something that I felt like I could run to the track in and then run on the track. For me it was something that I really wanted to wear because it was so lightweight for those fastest of days and I don't really get the sense that this is like a speedy shoe anymore. For me, it's now more squarely in the daily trainer category and it makes sense to me as a daily trainer and I've been really enjoying it that way. Lately, I've also been using it as a bit of a recovery shoe or a longer distance shoe and it's been holding up really well for that. So for me, the use case now seems to be that the Kinvara is more of a daily trainer that may or may not be what they're intending, but for me, this is a really great daily trainer. Uh, the other thing that makes it feel very not Kinvara like to me is that the Kinvara and we even saw it here and this was like a big thing that I was concerned about for my initial runs uh, was that this area down here like on the medial side there was always like the hint of stability that Saucony likes to put in a lot of their shoes and especially the Kinvara. For me the last Kinvara that I ran in was the Kinvara 9 and I only ran in it to the 100 mile mark and then I couldn't run with it anymore because that hint of stability would over time just like bother my knees. It would send extra impact because it was just a stiffer shoe here and a little bit back here as well towards the heel on the medial side uh, or like the side like central to your body and that just kind of sent extra shock waves up to my knee and it always bothered me. I didn't get any sense of that at all. Uh, maybe that's in there and maybe like now my body appreciates that or needs that or maybe kind of I've evolved into the shoe or maybe the shoe has changed and it just doesn't have that anymore. Uh, but in either event, I had no problems running with this shoe over time at all. I've absolutely been loving it, love putting it on. And it's even changed for me in terms of the comfort of the upper. The upper was comfortable in the beginning uh, as well, but over time it has molded a little bit to the shape of my foot and areas that were previously a little bit snug have loosened up and now it's just super comfortable to wear casually as well. 
So this is a shoe that I initially brought down with me to Austin when I was down there. I took it for the first run was, uh, I think like a 20 mile run. The first day I got really lost, ended up in a rocky riverbed somehow. Uh, but that was an adventure and it worked out fine. But for that trip, I had like kind of had this as my casual shoe to kind of like commute fly, do all that kind of stuff in. And I felt like it was really uncomfortable to wear at the airport. But fast forward to the Atlanta tri Olympic trials marathon weekend very recently, uh, I wore this shoe as well to the airport. And by that point, the shoe had kind of loosened up, gotten molded to my foot a little bit better. And it was a really comfortable casual shoe to wear. It's a shoe that I wore as I was running around chasing all the athletes, trying to get footage from the race. And on the way back home, um, I also, of course, wore the shoe because I wore it there and it was really comfortable to wear uh, at the airport then. And I find myself now reaching for this as my casual shoe. So I'm just really like it as a great all arounder. This blackout colorway that Saucony has been introducing across their product line this year, I'm absolutely in love with it. I think it can just kind of put it anywhere and it just looks great. Uh, and so I've been a big fan of living with the Canvara 11, both as a daily trainer running shoe and as a casual shoe as well. So it's like hitting all the marks for me. So I feel like this shoe is a really great solid hit. To make it even better is that the way this midsole is holding up and the outsole is holding up. So originally I had a lot of concerns about the outsole because you basically got two little tiny hits of rubber. I mean, I complained about the Epic React and how little rubber that shoe had. This takes that even further and basically says we're not gonna put any rubber on there at all. Um, but to the extent that there is, it is in some higher traffic areas for me. So this spot back here is a spot on most of my shoes where I'll see a lot of wear and that's just because of the weird way that my foot strikes the ground as I'm running. There's almost no wear there even though like this is normally the hot spot for me. The other hot spot for me in terms of wear and tear is usually right here. And other than a little bit of discoloration from the original gray, it's a little bit more of a dusty color. Um, not really seeing much wear at all. I was expecting this area to look a little bit more like chewed up and wrinkly, kind of like a elephant's foot. That's what I was expecting. Not really seeing that at all. I'm seeing a little bit of wear way up at the top in the toes here, which is unusual because I don't feel like I spent too much time in my toes. I did a little bit just to get a sense of it, um, but I didn't think I spent too much time up there, but there is a little bit of wear on that little rubber patch up at the top, but nothing that indicates that this is a 100 mile shoe. It doesn't feel like it as I'm running in it either. So. The value is definitely in this shoe. If you are a huge fan of the old Canvaras or the way Canvaras have been, I'm not sure that you're gonna love this shoe as much as I do. But if you're looking for a really solid daily trainer, this is one that is gonna be really high on my list. It definitely can be one of the best shoes of the year for me in my book. I know it's really early, it's March, um, but it's uh, I, I like it that much. I think that this is a very good daily training shoe. So those are my thoughts on the Canvara 11 after 100 miles. Let me know in the comments what you guys think or if you have any other questions about this shoe. I'd love to talk to you guys about it more down there. Before I go, I wanna talk about the charity runner for this week. This week, it's John Henry who's gonna be running the London Marathon and raising money for the New York Roadrunners Team for Kids, an organization that helps introduce kids to the joys of sport and running, which is the sport that we all love. That's why we're all here. So a very worthy cause. I was happy to donate $70 of my own money uh, and I'll post links in the description in case you'd like to learn more. And John Henry, since he's been the charity runner of the week, he's been getting donations from you guys, other viewers, uh, and he's and I have been thankful and he's been very thankful as well. He's been in the comments for the last couple of days of videos, if you guys have been down there uh, and thanking people individually. I'm seeing a lot of familiar names, which is great, but I'd love to see some new names as well. Uh, I'm not sure what the minimum donation amount is, if it's like five bucks or 10 bucks, but if you guys have ever, uh, enjoyed the videos and have gotten value from it. I would love it if you could donate just to one, it doesn't have to be John, you can wait for a charity that you like uh, coming up. But I think if we could all make a goal of donating to one charity runner for the entire, just one for the entire year, I think that the impact would be just phenomenal. Already we've been seeing such a great impact in 2020 and it has been really inspiring to see you guys rallying around the charity runners of the week. I just think it's so great to see what we can do when we run together as a pack. 
That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?